Welcome to Lecture Online, and now that we have learned some of the basics in the previous video, of course, on the basics on X-ray diffraction patterns in order to figure out the structure of crystals and the packing densities and the packing arrangement of atoms and, and molecules inside crystalline structures, we're now going to do an example to see how that really works. So let's say that we're bombarding some sort of crystal structure with X-rays, the wavelength of X-rays 0.2 nanometers, which is 200 picometers, and let's say for the sake of argument that the separation distance between the first two layers is 250 picometers. The question is, at what angle do we need to bombard with x-rays the crystalline structure so that we see the struct interference coming out at the other side of the detect at the detector? So for construct interference, what should the angle be assuming n equals 1, meaning assuming that this is the first order of, inter of construct interference so that the separation distance of the waves or the, I should say, the phase difference of the waves is one uh, wavelength. Okay, we already figured out that the extra distance travels 2d times the sine of theta. d is the separation distance right here between the first two layers of atoms. These are atoms in the crystalline structure. Here are the atoms in the second layer. Notice the wave comes in like this. This angle right here, theta, is the same as the angle theta right there. So this distance right here is equal to the separation distance of the layers times the sine of the angle because it's the opposite side of this right triangle. Think of this as a right triangle. And maybe I can use some different color to indicate that. So here's our right triangle. There's theta. There's the opposite side of theta. So this is equal to d sine theta, the hypotenuse times the sine of theta. So that would be the extra distance traveled from, for this wave compared to this wave, because this wave scatters this way. This wave continues this distance, and again, this distance, which is also d sine theta. So the extra distance traveled is 2 d sine theta. And if, if we set that distance equal to one wavelength, we can actually solve that equation for theta. In other words, what angle do we need to, um, does the beam have to approach the crystalline structure in order to get constructive interference? So 2 d sine theta is going to be equal to one wavelength. At that point, we will see constructive interference. Of course, if it's equal to two wavelengths or three wavelengths, again, we'll see constructive interference, but we may not have achieved that because there may be limitations as to how many times we can get constructive interference as we change the angle, and you'll see that in just a moment. So let's solve for this angle first. So now we have the sine of theta is equal to the wavelength lambda divided by two times the separation distance, and so therefore theta is equal to the arc sine of the lambda divided by two times the separation distance, which is equal to the arc sine of lambda, which is 200 picometers, divided by two times the separation distance of 250 picometers. So that would be the arc sine of 200 divided by 500, which is the arc sine of 0.4. And with a calculator, we'll find out in just a moment what that is. 0.4, take the arc sine, and we get 23.6 degrees. So that's equal to 23.6 degrees. So if we angle the beam like in such a way that the, the beam is angled in relative to the horizontal at 23.6 degrees, we'll get construct interference. The detector will see both beams being in phase say, okay, from that we can then surmise what the separation distance is. Notice that we could probably increase the angle and find a way to get cons the construct interference when the wavelength difference is 2 lambda. So let's try that. Let's see. Let me use a different color here. Let me use green. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same equation, but now we're going to set the extra distance 2d sine theta. We're going to set equal to 2 lambda and see if we can find an angle to as a solution there as well. So first of all, the twos cancel out, and so we have the sine of theta is equal to lambda divided by d, which means that the arc sine, just like before, we take the arc sine of um, lambda over d, the lambda would be 200 picometers, and d would be 250 picometers, and that would be equal, of course, to theta. So that's a new angle. We should see another construct interference pattern when the separation distance is equal to uh, 2 lambda, and so that would be the arc sine of 0.8. So let's see what that angle is at 0.8. So 0.8, take the arc sine of that, and we get 53.1 degrees. So we can angle the x ray beam 
at an angle of 53.1 degrees, and again, we will see a constructive interference pattern on the detector. So we can start angling the X-ray beam. When we reach 23.6 degrees, the detector will see a strong interference pattern with a constructive interference pattern, so we'll see a strong signal. Then we can continue to increase the angle. Then what happens is the beam strength will disappear. And then when we continue to increase the angle until we reach 53.1 degrees, again, the interference pattern now will be strong, will be constructed interference, and the detector will see a strong signal again. And so you can verify then that at various angles, when you'll see constructive and we'll see destructive interference pattern with a result that we can actually figure out from those angles what the separation distance is, of course, knowing that the wavelength of the X-ray is 200 nanometers. So there's a nice example. And let me do one more video with a example at a slightly different slant so you can feel very comfortable on how to find the uh, separation distance between the layers in a crystal structure by using these x-ray diffraction pattern techniques.